The second to last subsection on the PAT is cube counting. Now, unlike the other sections, we talk about the timing here not in terms of time per question, but instead as time per figure, which is two minutes per figure. Most figures will have three questions each, although this may vary between two to four. Either way, you'll still want to spend two minutes regardless of how many questions there are because most of the work is simply in counting the number of cubes and what kinds of cubes are in each figure, so that will be the same regardless of the questions. Either way, just like before, we'll go through the rules and strategies together, then get some practice. As in the other sections, the rule page for cube counting will appear on test day, but of course, you want to know those rules in advance, so instead, skip right past it and learn those rules with me right now. An overview of cube counting is that the cubes are actually part of a larger figure. So these individual cubes that are all identical are stacked up, and your job is to count how many of these will have a particular number of sides exposed. The way these figures are created is by cementing together identical cubes. And once that figure is created, all of the sides are painted or lacquered, which basically means that every side that's exposed will count. What does not count is the bottom, because those don't count as being exposed because the bottom must be sitting on some sort of surface. One more very important rule is that the only cubes present are those that are necessary to support the other cubes in the figure. So these figures are meant to be realistic. It's as if someone built this out of building blocks and put them all together and then poured paint over the whole thing. So then your job is to count how many sides get painted, re remembering that any sides that are touching other cubes won't get paint on them, and any sides touching the floor won't get paint on them. So for practice, let's look at this figure here. Take just a few seconds now and identify how many cubes total are in this stack. Hopefully, you realize that there were actually only 13 cubes here. Those are the cubes that you can see, as well as the two center cubes required to maintain the position of those two cubes you see that are on the second level high. You may have initially thought 14 cubes, but notice there's that space in the back, and that space isn't required to be there because nothing's sitting on it and you can't see the cube that would be there so there isn't one. The only cubes that are present are those that you can see and those that must be there to support the other cubes in the figure. If you can't see it and it's not necessary then it's not there. And believe it or not, this is actually to make this section more fair because you shouldn't have to guess whether it's there or not Instead, the hard fast rule is if it's not visible and it's not necessary, it's simply not there. So that's it. Those are the rules for this section. But that's a little bit abstract and it's easier to see examples. So next we'll talk about all the different kinds of cubes that you can see and what it looks like when one, two, three, four, or five sides are painted.